Hello lovely family, it's good to have you here today. When we mention money in churches, most people feel very uncomfortable. You may have the best idea, but without money, it shall never become a reality. Many people do not have money because they do not know how money works. Today, Pastor Mensah Otabel talks about how money works. If you want to take your finances to the next level, do well to not miss any section of this video. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching. I'm going to focus my exhortation and prayer on money. On money. Um, the although the focus i mean we're praying on for children today i just feel that we should pray regarding money and uh, we're going to deal with some heavy stuff concerning money um normally when you mention money in church people feel very uncomfortable um because when you hear money you just touch your pocket and you feel like somebody wants to take your money. I'm not here to take your money. I'm here to make sure you have some money. Amen. You have some money. You need to have money. Money is critical. Money is important. And I'm going to talk about it a bit. And then we're going to pray very strategically. Today's prayer is going to be prayer warfare as we deal with money issues. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 it's a passage that you may be familiar with I will still read it and make my commentary from it Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day the Lord your God gives you power to get wealth it, if it wasn't good he wouldn't give you the power to get it he gives you power to get wealth. why so that he may establish his covenant with you as, it, as he swore to your fathers as it is this day. So the passage says that the reason God gives us the power to get wealth is so that he will establish his covenant with us as he swore to the fathers. Now he didn't say that so that he will make a covenant with us but so that he will establish his covenant with us now what does that mean now let's take for example you are a man and men are the ones who should be doing the things i'm going to talk about and you call your wife sweetheart for those of you who use that fanciful phrase or honey for those of you who are more advanced <laughs> or the sugar in my cocoa for those of you who are very local <laughs> so you call your wife and say whatever appellations you give her you say I love you so much and I promise you my wife once in a while women should say to men but no now it's the men saying it I promise you that I will take good care of you and I will make you a happy woman and I will make sure you have no need that all your needs are met uh, that there is money in your account and you have food to eat and nice clothes and jewelry and all of that and all the women will say amen now what the man has said to the woman would be the covenant the promise the 
agreement he wants to come together with his wife so that these good things will happen to the wife so that's a covenant made a promise made so let's say that this man grows up to be 96 years old and at the age of 96 he comes back to her and says honey or sweetheart or sugar whichever may be I'm very sorry that when I married you I made you all those promises but I couldn't keep them I couldn't make you a happy person you don't have jewelry you don't have the clothes I promised you and life has been hard for us all these years of marriage when the man says that you would have said that he made a covenant but he didn't establish it because the covenant didn't become a reality but let's say that that wasn't the story but the story was that three years after he made the promise to the woman he comes to the woman and says sweetheart honey sugar I have good news for you this is the checkbook to the bank account I have opened for you for status for status just for you to turn around in life I have put in there five million Ghana cities just for status at that time you would say that the covenant has been established now God says that the reason why he will give you the power to get wealth is not because he wants to make a covenant with you the covenant he has already made but so that the covenant will be established so the non-establishment of the covenant will go against God it is in his interest and for his own dignity and integrity to ensure that the promise he gives you becomes established so when God becomes your God part of the ways for him to validate his relationship with you is to give you the power to get wealth it is critical for you to get wealth it is critical it is important it is foundational to your relationship with God somebody will say are you sure what about the salvation of the soul what about the peace of the Lord what about the joy of the Lord what about living righteously what about living holy all of that are important and he could have chosen all of them as the validation for his covenant he could have said remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you peace that he may establish his covenant with you or remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you joy so that he can establish his covenant with you or remember the Lord your God for it is he who makes you handsome so that he can establish his covenant with you as much as all of these are important the passage says the establishment of the covenant is the giving of wealth is the giving of wealth now I didn't invent the scripture I'm just telling you what the scripture says so what is so important about God prospering you that it is tied to his covenant with you because money is powerful if you don't know let me tell you if you haven't discovered it yet may I bring it to your notice that money is powerful money is the most powerful force in the natural realm that is why Jesus in comparing the forces we could submit to said you cannot serve God and mammon money in other words Jesus is saying this force of money is powerful in the natural realm as God is in the realm of the spirit and also in the natural and you can't serve both money is very powerful 
is very powerful. Money is what led Delilah to betray Samson. It wasn't because Delilah was a bad girl. I know you don't want to name your daughter Delilah because Delilahs are bad. But she wasn't a bad girl. She was a nice girl until money showed up. She was a nice girl. Samson loved her and I'm sure she had love for Samson until love, money changed the equation of love. The moment money came in, it changed Delilah from a nice girl to a schemer and a conniver. I have seen money and the lack of it change good people into bad people. Money is what secured the betrayal of Jesus. Judas was a disciple. Jesus actually called him an apostle until money showed up and for 30 pieces of silver allegiance changed. Money is what changed the story of the resurrection. The first people who saw Jesus resurrect were the guards who were around his tomb. The first people. It wasn't Mary, it wasn't the women who went to the, uh, to the, uh, to the tomb. They went later. The first eyewitnesses of the resurrection were the guards. They were there, an angel came, knocked them out, rolled away the stone, Jesus came out. They saw it. They were the first eyewitnesses. Their testimony was going to change the course of history. They went out to the city, to the chief priest and said, Hey, watch what happened. We saw it with our eyes. The guy rose up. Can you imagine if that testimony had stood? But the people there said, that story cannot go. We must kill it. So the Bible says they paid the money to go and tell a different story to say his disciples stole his body. And then the people said, I'm sure they said back and said, listen, that's a dangerous story. It means we didn't do our job well and we can get punished for that. He says, don't worry. If he gets the higher authority, we will settle them too. In other words, we will pay you and pay the investigators and make sure this story you have seen with your own eyes never gains credibility and the Bible says that story is being repeated up to today because the power of money changed the story of the resurrection if you think money is just a, a harmless force you are joking you are a joker that is why God says part of his covenant establishment is that he's going to give you the power to get wealth. Because money is powerful. Money finances ideas. It determines which ideas will become popular in the world and which will not. It's not the merit of the ideas themselves, but the money financing it. Money finances values. Money finances beliefs. A wrong idea financed with a lot of money can defeat a good idea with no money. For a season, enthusiasm and zeal can defeat money, but over time, enthusiasm and zeal will get tired. For a season, wisdom can overrule money, but over time, wisdom will be despised. Money has long-term endurance in the battle of ideas. So if God wants an idea to be propagated, it's not enough for him to have people who can say it. He has to make sure the people are fueled to go and say it. Everything about the gospel. People say, well, don't talk about money. Talk about souls. Oh, everything about soul winning is about money. 
The Bibles to get people to read is about money. It's, it costs money. It is printed. The evangelist to go to a remote village needs to be financed. You need to buy a bicycle or something for him to go. That costs money. If you're going to reach remote villages, it takes a lot of money. You may have to go and build a school or a hospital. That's all money. If you're going to disciple people to serve God, you need to build a church building for them. The whole process of salvation, apart from the message, which is free, the conveyor of the message is paid for. Sound system costs money. Everything about the gospel costs money. Yet when money is talked about, it is as if the church has become carnal. But the most spiritual thing, apart from the direct preaching of the gospel, is money which finances the preaching of the gospel. And God says that he will give you the power to get it. Because he can trust you that when you get it, you will support his work. Now, if you were Satan, for a moment, think like the devil. And you wanted to stop the preaching of the gospel from spreading, what would you do? If you were Satan, if Satan wants to stop the gospel from being preached, he cannot stop people from being called because that, he doesn't control that. It's God who calls. He cannot stop the anointing because he doesn't control that. That is God. But if Satan wants to interfere with the preaching of the gospel, he's not going to interfere at the calling stage. He will interfere at the propagation stage and make sure that those who have the mandate to preach the gospel never have the money to finance it. And he's going to do that by spreading lies and a sense of uncomfortableness about what it takes to make money. He will most likely ensure that ideas which are opposite the gospel are fully financed, but the ideas that support the gospel never get financed. He makes sure that those who preach the gospel in a wrong way, a false gospel, and, and are bad representatives of Christ, get the money, and those who are the true representatives never get money. If you were Satan, that would be your agenda. And may I suggest to you, my dear ones, that is the agenda. We are fighting a warfare for the kingdom of God. I have come to realize that this thing is not just about people expressing opinion. It is a warfare for the soul of the world. To determine whether people will be saved or not. Whether the church will be strong or not. Whether Christ will be preached or not. It's money. If you look at it, just in this era, we've been playing the World Cup. The World Cup is being played. Money is being spent. Have you heard anybody complain about the money being spent at the World Cup? Have you? Billions. All we are hearing is, oh, the Russians have done a marvelous job. Oh, they've well organized a great World Cup. Did they organize with water? Uh, did they organize with water? We saw, look at the stadiums the Russians have built. What, what built that? Air. They just breathe. Woo! And then the stadiums are built. It's money. Money built that. Money organized that. Money is what is broadcasting the World Cup. Money is what is making it the most attractive idea in the world at this time. And people are determining who wins. Belgium. France. We wish Ghana was there. What a 
are we thinking about? And people are following this. Questing of what eternal value is the World Cup? Of what value? We are watching adults running around and trying to kick a leather ball into a rectangular post. And we call that the most important thing happening in the world at this time. How does it save you? How does it help you? How, how does it improve humanity? In a direct sense. Let's face it. How does the play of Ronaldo or Messi improve lives? Nobody complains. So we spend all the money. And everybody thinks it's a good cause for adults to be running after this thing and be kicking and kicking and kicking. <laughs> and we say, you didn't kick it well. You should have kicked it this way. You shouldn't catch it well. <laughs> and it's in the newspapers, it's on television, it's world news. Of what intrinsic value is that? No value. But money has made it important. So important that after church, some of you right now on your phone, you are checking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you are, are on a day when a match is played will not go to church. And you are watching adults doing that. Who considered that that activity is worth the world's attention? money and who considered that the preaching of the gospel for the eternal redemption of the soul of man who, to live eternally with God should not be financed we are dealing with a mindset conspiracy and if Christians don't understand that we will sit aloof and allow the systems of this world to take God out of the picture. But we are smarter than that. That is why God says he wants to give you power to get wealth. Because of his covenant. Why? Because he trusts you that you will put his money to good use. I am believing God that sometime in the near future we can organize greater works and other Christian events on the scale of the World Cup. Because if there is any idea that must be financed, can you imagine if the whole world has the greater west has the attention of the whole world and people are checking who is preaching which is what, what are they saying can you imagine the blessing it will be to the entire world the church must be smart and today we're going to do serious spiritual warfare in that area the bible says in ephesians chapter 6 6 verse 11 to 13 put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand the bible says we're dealing with principalities a principality in the natural realm is a state ruled by a prince but in the spiritual realm is a demonic entity who rules geographical spaces powers talks about those who exercise dominion the warfare of the believer is against spiritual wickedness in high places the passage in the king james says heavenly places other passages says high places spiritual wickedness that operates at high levels high levels not low levels 
So somebody said, what's the difference between high level and low level? I'll explain that and then we'll start praying. Now let's say that you sell sugar. I know you don't sell sugar, but let's say you sell sugar. You are a sugar seller and you sell sugar on a tabletop. You get your sugar there and get a couple of things and you have your sugar table. You sell it at Mataheko or Kokumleme. Uh, you have your sugar table. And you start selling the sugar and maybe two years ago sugar was doing well and you're making some little money to you know, move on in life. But all of a sudden you see that sugar is not moving again. People are not buying sugar. Your, your industry is, is, I mean, your sales are returning. So when you look at that situation, you say, wow, my, people are not buying sugar again. And, and, and sugar is not going and my business is spoiling. And then you realize uh, maybe next door to you, somebody has a table and is selling something else and it's going. And it's selling well. So you look at your sugar not making sales. His product, maybe a sugar substitute, uh, saccharin or some, some other uh, sh sugar substitute, is people are buying it. So you would think that your battle is with him because they are not buying yours and they are buying his. Because at the low level, that is how you see the battle. But the battle which you are fighting on your tabletop didn't start from your tabletop. It may have started in a boardroom where some people got together and said, we have to break the sugar industry. And so they decide that they're going to sponsor researchers from a scientific facility, maybe from from Yale or from Harvard or from some big scientific uh, uh, establishment to come up with new research about sugar and how nobody should eat sugar. Now, I'm, I, I'm just using sugar, although you shouldn't eat too much of it, but I'm just using it for that. So they come up with that and they decide we are breaking the back of the sugar industry because we want to promote another product in place of sugar. They have made the decision at high level so they decide, there they are some sponsored re researches, and then they decide that they go to the countries where people cultivate sugar cane, and they tell them, well, how much per ton do you get for sugar cane? They say, oh, we get $1,000 per ton. They say, oh, no, 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 we'll give you another crop. It will give you $5,000. Instead of sugar, cultivate marijuana, which is now legalized in many cases. I mean, these things are playing, I believe you me, destroying industries. So the people decide they cut off all the sugar cane and plant marijuana now at the time these people are making this decision and affecting your industry you are at your tabletop minding your low level battle with your next door table but at the high level it has been determined that poverty will pursue you in two years time and when it comes upon you you, you your mind can't even buy get it that two years ago somebody decided that my industry should collapse at the low level and it was decided at the high level the bible says that the weapons of our warfare we don't deal with the micro level of tabletop but we are dealing with spiritual wickedness in high places orchestrated maneuvers agendas of satan using state actors using international organizations multilateral bilateral they are using donor agencies they are using all kinds of conspiracies major news networks to kill something and you see it at the low level so if all you are doing is fighting the battle at the low level you always lose so today we are going to the high level amen for a moment forget about your little problem we are going to the high level for God the Creator to compare himself to money shows how powerful money is. Matthew 6, 24. Lack of money changed good people into bad people. Examples of such people that money, lack of money changed from being good people to bad people are as follows. 1. Money led Delilah to betray Samson. 2. Money secured the betrayal of Jesus Christ and three money changed the resurrection story of Jesus Christ 
Thank you for your time and for watching this video till the end. Please do well to like this video, subscribe to our channel and share this video to as many people as you can in order to bless their lives just as your life has been blessed. Please do well to pass through Pastor Mesa Otabel's YouTube channel to watch his videos as well. Thank you and stay blessed.